I'm Ira Trivedi and welcome to another episode of Yoga Ira. On today's segment, I explain yoga for beginners. Even if you don't know the why of yoga, this 10 minute segment will allow you to get, get comfortable in the basic yoga asanas. I know it can look very complicated, all the twisted postures, it can, get, it can look difficult to decipher. But in today's segment, we're gonna be practicing very, very simple and basic asanas that everyone and anyone can do. And it's gonna run you through a step-by-step -step process to get initiated into the practice of yoga. A very fundamental part of yoga is our breath. In fact, a yoga asana is defined as a posture which is steady, comfortable, and in which you are constantly breathing. So the correct way to breathe is the essence and the seed of your yoga practice. But the truth of the matter is that most people aren't even breathing correctly. Now, breathing is fundamental to our health. We oxygenate our body. It's really the essence of our life. So you must always breathe from your diaphragm. So we're gonna begin today by deep abdominal breathing. Again, it looks simple, but it's very, very fundamental, not just to your yoga practice, but also to your life. So what we're going to be doing in deep abdominal breathing is that we're going to be placing our right hand on our stomach. The left hand can be in chin mudra on our knees or if you're, if you're not comfortable doing this yet, you can just put it lightly onto your lap. Once you keep one hand here, you should breathe consciously now from your abdomen. So inhale deeply, allowing the breath to come up, diaphragm, lungs, chest throat and nose and slowly exhale inhale from your stomach your stomach should be extending out like a balloon expand your chest a little bit bringing your shoulders out spine straight and now exhale and down on the inhalation, you should feel as if you're blowing air into a balloon. And exhale, you're releasing that air from a balloon. The air leaves your nose, throat, lungs, diaphragm, stomach. Continue your deep abdominal breathing. Breathing in from the stomach, expanding out. Expanding your chest, filling your body with beautiful oxygen, and now slowly release and exhale. Now you can release your hand, bring it back on your knee. Take a few normal breaths, bringing your breath back. Sometimes abdominal breathing can be more tiring than you can imagine. You can open your eyes. Pranayam is the most important part of yoga. So if you only have five minutes a day to do your practice, focus on the pranayam because that is crucial to your life. Prana means the vital energy in our body. It's equivalent of chi, it's the life force within us. And yam means the control of that life force. By controlling our breath, we control that vital energy or life force within us and we can use that life force to do amazing things. We can increase our energy levels, we can increase our mental focus and concentration, we can increase our willpower, and we can manifest all of our dreams. So while pranayam also has amazing health benefits, it also has really, really great mental and spiritual benefits, and it can really transform our lives entirely. The beginner's yoga practice, we're gonna be beginning with Kapalabhati, which is a Kriya, it's a great process to get initiated into the practice of pranayam. What we're doing in Kapal Bhati, which literally means shining skull, because it really invigorates our bodies, is that we're pumping in the air and really working with our lungs. So what we're doing in Kapal Bhati, always remember, is that we're exhaling forcefully while the inhalation should be passive. Often a mistake that people make is breathing in in Kapal Bhati, so they're going 
that's incorrect. What you're doing here, in fact, is that you're, you're breathing out. So the exhalation is forced and the inhalation is happening automatically. It should be a very, very natural movement, very smooth. You should feel no discomfort at all. So begin doing this for just two minutes. You've begun with your abdominal breathing for two minutes. Begin Kapalabhati for two minutes. Do about 30 pumpings for 30 seconds. Take a small breath, a small break, and then go back again. So we're now gonna begin with Kapalabhati, our initial practice. Make sure again, the most important part of it and the most common mistake is the inhalation, which should in fact be passive. So sit in a comfortable seated posture. Your spine should be absolutely straight. Your hands can be on your knees in chin mudra. And now close your eyes and begin with taking a few breaths. So deep abdominal breathing like we just learned. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And now begin the stomach pumping. And now release. Now we move on to Kati Chakra Asan, which is not technically an asan, but which is a kriya or a warm-up exercise, getting us ready for the asans that we'll be doing. So when we do the Kati Chakra Asan and when we move from side to side, always make sure to be inhaling and exhaling and focusing on your breath. So this is very simple. You can do this sitting down or standing. I'm going to be showing you how to do both. So inhale and bring your arms up to shoulder level. Make sure your palms face each other. And now inhale and move to your right, slowly moving your shoulders out. And now take your right hand, grab your left shoulder and look over your shoulder as far as you can. Stay here, take a few breaths and now come back to center, coordinating with your breath. And now the other side. Moving our right hand back, left hand over the right shoulder and looking over our shoulder as much as we can. Staying here and breathing. And now slowly come back to center with an exhale. And we can do this a few times. So right side with an inhale. Exhale, come back to center. Inhale, right over your shoulder. Exhale, center. Inhale, wrap your arms around your body and stay here and twist. Really feeling that twist in your shoulders and your spine. Center. And then left side. And center. And now you can slowly come down. Leg raises, again, very simple, but very, very effective. They really help open up your hamstrings of your legs. They help strengthen your legs, your thighs. It helps align your whole body in the correct way. And if you hold your leg up when you're raising your leg, that, that little simple stretch is a great all over body stretch. And you can really feel the difference between one leg and the other leg when you stretch it out. So again, it allows you to understand what simple leg raises and stretches can do. So after you do one side, the left side, see how different both the sides feel when you're lying down. Uh, this is my guarantee to you that you're gonna feel a distinct effect in both sides of your body. So again, very, very simple exercise. You can do this at any time of the day, but of course it's most effective if you do it along with this 10 minute routine. So lie on your back with your arms on your side your body in one line. You can place your arms underneath your body. This supports your back. Inhale and raise your right leg up and exhale, come down. Now inhale, left leg up. Exhale, come down. Now inhale and bring your right leg up. Bring your body up and grab your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, wherever you're comfortable, your legs. 
be as straight as it possibly can. And your left leg should be on the ground as much as possible. Both knees should be as straight as you can make them. Stay here and hold. Feel the stretch in your hamstring, in your thighs. Stay here and breathe. Hold this posture for 30 seconds. And now release the arms and bring your leg down. And now inhale, bring the left leg up. Bring your chest up and grab your calves, knees, thighs, wherever you're comfortable. Try to keep both your knees straight. Your right leg should be down on the ground. Stay here and breathe with every breath going deeper and deeper into the stretch. Breathe. And now slowly release your hands, release your body and come back. We're gonna take a short break before we return to a 10 minute beginner's routine. Welcome back to our 10 minute beginner's routine. I hope you're ready to get into your next asanas. We're gonna do our first asana, a relaxation pose, the child's pose or bal asana, which is one of my personal favorites. Again, very simple, but if we do this along with our focus, with our breath, it can be highly effective. It's a great stretch for our thighs, for our glute muscles, for our, for our pelvis, for our spine. It, it really aids in digestion and circulation as well. Sit with your knees folded underneath your body. This is Vajrasana. Now inhale and bring your arms up over your head. And now exhale and slowly come down, bringing your forehead onto your mat. Knees are close to each other. And now move your arms to the side of your body. Body is in a cocoon. This is a child's pose or bal asana, a deeply relaxing asana. With every breath, feel like you're sinking deeper and deeper into your mat, your chest coming down, your forehead coming down, relaxing your spine, your legs, your entire body. Now inhale and come back up in Vajrasana. Inversions are a very fundamental part of yoga and your yoga practice. That is why the Shish Asan headstand or the Sarvang Asan shoulder stand are such important asans. They're also important because they have so many benefits. The Shish Asan is called the king of all asans and the Sarvang Asan is called the queen of all asans. So if you have a very short amount of time, you should definitely invert your body. It's really great for our circulation and it's not typically something that we do in our normal course of our lives. We never really turn upside down, but it has such great benefits that we really should try to do that. Now, getting straight into it, the Sarvangasana or the Shishasana may look very, very difficult. So it's great to begin with something called the Viparitakarni, which is actually technically a mudra and not an asana. It's a meditative asana. It's great, it's, it's got great benefits for your spine, for your thyroid, hormonal fu hormone function and digestion, and of course, circulation. So let's get into the Viparitakarni Mudra. Lie on your back with the legs and feet together and place the arms and hands close to the body. Now slide both knees towards your body and raise both legs, moving the legs over the body towards the head. Push down on your arms, raising the hips up and rolling the spine from the floor, taking the legs further back. In the final position, the weight of the body rests on the shoulders, neck, elbows and upper back. Now gaze up towards your toes. Stay here and breathe. And now slowly come back, roll your spine back to the ground and rest in Shavasana. Often long hours of working on the computer, sitting in a chair, looking into our cell phones can give you a lot of neck back problems. So in this day and age, it's really, really important to work on our backs and spines. Pujangasana is a fantastic asana, one of my personal favorites. I do this almost every single day. But if you're not comfortable in that initially, we're gonna do Sarpasana, which is a great initial asana to prepare you for Pujangasana. Lie flat on the stomach with the legs straight out and the feet together. Now interlock the fingers and place a chin on the ground. 
Inhale and raise the chin up, chest up, and you can bring your arms up. Imagine the hands are being pulled from behind. Stay here and breathe. And now release and rest. Now we're going to be doing a variation of the standing forward bend or what I like to call the tabletop asana. Inhale and bring your arms straight up above your head so that your whole body is in a straight line. Now exhale and slowly come down from your waist till your arms are in line with your shoulders. Your body should form a 90 degree angle. Stay here and breathe. With each breath, shift the balance onto your toes, stretching out your arms in front of you to balance your sedalf. Now slowly inhale, bring your arms back up and release. We now end our 10 minute routine with Shavasan, everyone's favorite asana. But Shavasan is not as easy as it looks. It's called the corpse pose, and in this asana, we're supposed to be as still as a corpse. Lie on your back with your legs and feet apart. Your hands shouldn't be too far apart or too close together. With each breath, go deeper into your relaxation. You can focus on different body parts, so begin with your toes. Relax your entire body from top to bottom, consciously telling yourself giving yourself instructions to relax. This is the most effective way of relaxing in Shavasana. Thank you so much for joining me today on Yoga Ira. See you again next week.